Exploration Films. Check us out on the web at explorationfilms.com. There was another time we were filming some type of antelope, and I turned to the camera and we're laying there, it was a nighttime shoot. What is that awful smell? We were laying in lion dunk, you know, and he's like, oh, that's fine, just stay here because they won't come near us because the smell of the lion dung. So they got, we actually got really good shots because the lion dung smell kept them kind of, you know, from stepping on top of us. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's real, it's down there in the dirt. The, the filming side of it is, is probably the most interesting because it gets you out of the office, it gets you out of the, you know, the regular, whatever regular is, you know, humdrum, daily events that, that we all have to live. So once you go through the editing process in the program, that can become quite tedious. That can take a year editing a program. We started with more than 65 hours of good footage that was usable. And then that has to be whittled down. Um, so then what we'll do is we will then file the footage into categories by species or type. And then we'll get a rough idea of, well, how many minutes of footage do we have of octopus? How many minutes of footage do we have of white rhino that we can use in a program? And then we begin the research process. Now, some of the research is kind of there in our heads already because, uh, you know, we've observed the animals while we're filming them. We've been out there in the wild with them for a certain amount of time. Plus we work with experts as well, you know, game wardens and so on. And then we begin to script the program and do the additional research and look at it from a creationist point of view as well, to bring out those real beautiful nuggets of information that you wouldn't get in other programs, whether they whether evolutionary from an evolutionary point of view or not. Evolutionists are fond of suggesting that new genetic information can be added to DNA by natural processes. DNA is a chemical string which carries the instructions for manufacturing enzymes or other proteins. So what genetic information do animals actually pass on? Animals share family characteristics like color, patterning, and size, etc. But remember, their offspring are the product of both the male and the female. All offspring contain genetic information from both their father and their mother. This is a random reassortment of their grandparents' information. Parents cannot choose what information they pass on. This is a lesser known member of the gazelle family, the white springbok. These springboks have diversified from their other gazelle relatives. This may have occurred because a small group of these springboks became separated from the parent population and, as a result, they lost information that was present in the original gene pool. These processes of reassortment or loss of genetic information are common in nature and do not contradict the idea of creation. However, evolutionists claim that such processes can give rise to completely new kinds of animals which have never been observed. The springbok diet is comprised of new grass shoots, flowers when available, and leaves. Interestingly, some antelope only feed on grass, whilst others only browse leaves from trees and bushes. And then there are the mixed feeders. In springbok herds, only the males with established territories breed. Apart from the facial stripe common to all springboks, this variety are completely white. These two common springbok males in the Kalahari test their strength one against the other. According to evolutionists, the stronger male will secure the breeding rights and therefore win the right to pass on his stronger genes to the next generation. But there's a problem with this theory. Yes, the stronger males are the ones that breed with the females, but that only means that all springbok lambs must have been parented by strong males. This creates a problem because the weaker males that grew up to be the losers in these rutting contests must also have originated from good stock. So why do they lose these fights if they're the genetic descendants of strong males? The reason is because physically stronger animals do not necessarily pass on only their stronger genetic information. And 
it's a good job that such information cannot be added to their genes. Imagine a planet populated by oversized, super-strength springboks. Such an imbalance would be detrimental to the delicate balance of life on Earth. Additionally, the hereditary information that does vary for superficial characteristics like color, size and strength do not necessarily determine the success of a species. For example, in a world ravaged by disease, a stronger immune system in a physically weaker animal would provide a greater chance of survival over a weaker immune system in a physically stronger one. Moreover, what we do know is that the process of variation only ever produces limited changes and not modifications that affect the basic design of an animal or how it functions. What we can see from the study of genetics is that reshuffling of information is a common way for variations to arise in species. This reshuffling takes place at the molecular level with complex mechanisms that appear to be designed. These changes allow creatures to adapt to their environments without needing new information. German professor Dr. Werner Gitt, an expert in information theory, said, There is no known law of nature, no known process, and no known sequence of events which can cause information to originate by itself in matter. Exploration Films, where curious truths and uncommon minds meet.